Back to Brian's Beat. Top Cat, the most effectual Top Cat, whose intellectual close friends get to call him DC, providing his wet dignity. Top Cat, the indisputable leader of the gang. He's the boss, he's a bit, he's a championship, he's the most tip top. He's a king, but above everything, he's the most tip-top, top cat, top cat. Hour two of Brian's Beat. Good morning to you. Plenty of sunshine today. Have you noticed, and I think it's the time of year that we're in right now, that you've had to adjust the the visor on your windshield because the sun seems to be just glaring right down at us especially when you're traveling due west. Uh, just be aware. Be careful if you're, if you're out there. The monthly VRX bringing us the Brian's B quote of the day. If you're spending less than $20 a month for prescription drugs, great. If not, then our monthly VRX service might be a good option for you. Check for yourself at monthlyvrx.com. And the Brian's B quote of the day comes from Les Brown. Don't let someone else's opinion of you become your reality. Don't let someone else's opinion of you become your reality. I watched, and I'm sure many of you watched on, uh, I think it was Tuesday evening, The Great Debate between Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. If you heard me yesterday with Barry, I said, Harris, right from, you know, she she marked the carpet right from the beginning. She came out, she walked, uh, she had a, a good pace to her walk, Donald Trump. Uh, you know, he came out the way Donald Trump and, and Joe Biden came out you know, just kind of walking calmly. He was getting ready to stand next to the his spot in the podium. Kamala Harris just came walking right up, had her hand out, said, Kamala Harris. She just took it to him right at the beginning. And I'm not sure if it was at that particular time or if something was eating at the former president before or something that happened afterwards. But he was not the Donald Trump that we have seen in other debates. And I, and I don't even include the debate that took place back in, in July, June, July, whatever it was. He just did not look like he was, he was at his best. And I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say Kamala Harris did all the right things. I mean, she did okay. She did better than he did. And I think she had more to prove than, than Donald Trump. But she came out and she made some bold statements at the beginning. She told you, told us what to watch out for with Donald Trump. And you know what? He walked right in. You know, it was like a bear trap. And he walked right into it. And he, you know, this is the thing. He can't help but but walk into these situations that he really can't back himself out of. Now, does that mean he's not going to Get the electoral college votes in in order to win the presidency? No, it doesn't. I have stated all along and I'm going to continue to say it. Donald Trump will not win the popular vote. That doesn't mean he won't win the election because that's based off of the electoral college. The electoral college is something that I favor. I'm not trying to get rid of it. I'm just saying the popular vote is not going to go to him. Now, 
taking it to the to the next degree. This whole thing dealing with Venezuelans and and Haitians, Haitians in Springfield, Ohio. Attention may be coming out at this particular time that there are Haitians, uh, 10,000 of which have have descended onto, onto Springfield, Ohio. But to bring them up and to convolute that story with that they're cooking and eating animals. The mayor of Springfield, a Republican, isn't agreeing with Donald Trump on that. DeWine, the governor of Ohio, also a Republican is not agreeing with Donald Trump on that. In fact, I think he had some pretty stiff words that he came back with in regards to that uh, dealing dealing with this. Just nothing has been founded. So if it's not founded, doesn't mean it's not true. True. But if it's not founded, how how can we sit here and talk about this is what's happening? But Donald Trump, he you know, he keeps on talking about it as if it is true. He turned down Fox because he didn't like the idea that two other people and not Jesse uh, Waters and not Sean Hannity would be the moderators. I think it's a good move on Donald Trump's part not to do another debate. And if I'm, you know, by by the same token, if I'm if I'm Kamala Harris, why take another chance? Why take another chance? You know, just I'm looking at it from a debate standpoint. Why should you take that chance? You 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 came out and you won. Donald Trump, you know, you got some problems if you go up against her. Why would you take that chance? Five zero eight nine nine six zero five hundred. If you'd like to debate, the debate. I think immigration is definitely going to be one of the top issues. I, I I'm reluctant to say what's going to be number one because what's number one on my mind isn't necessarily number one on your mind or number one on. Uh, your next door neighbor's mind. We all have our our hot button issues. Immigration is is a top issue. It's not my number one issue. The economy is definitely one of the top issues. It's probably one A with me. So what I'm getting at is there there are a lot of issues. Abortion. Abortion is a, a top issue with, with many people, mostly females. But it's not my top issue. So we we all have our thought process as to what is the number one issue out there. What is going to make you vote for candidate A, B, C, D, or E? As far as president. And there are also other things to vote on. All right, let's hear from you. 508 996 500 That's how you get onto the program today. Hello. 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 Was there a rule that you were, weren't supposed to shake hands? Did they agree on that first? And that's what seemed to be a problem for Trump. It looked like he was pacing himself to get to his podium when she did. But then she started to supersede that halfway point, and he just stopped. I thought it was agreed upon they weren't going to shake hands. So right off the bat. You know what? To be honest with you, Mm -hmm. I never even thought of it. I don't know. I'm just going to quick answer to you. I don't know, but I would find it hard to believe that that would be something that the candidates would have to, you know, their, their campaigns well, we're not going to shake hands at the beginning. Can you imagine that? 
I think they did have it. It was just like when Biden, they wanted him standing or sitting at the podium already. And they said, no, 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 you got to walk to the podium. <laughs> so there are rules that go right to the top of the uh, debate. Actually, right I knew that one. I did not know that shaking hands. I would believe be one. that but was can one you of the believe? rules. Th- this is... This is what it's come down to. You can't get people to debate without, well, I want to be able to sit here first. Um, we can or cannot shake hands. Come on, fellas. And well, we're fella like I. children. Children, um, two little kids. My, um, my relatives had to have a chat on the refrigerator. You get into the car first. Then the other one the next day would be first. They would fight. So it's like we're all children. But I would agree. And who do the kids learn from? <laughs> well, it settled the matter. It was a, it was a diplomatic uh, agreement. They they were satisfied with each having a share of the time to get into the car and seat belted in. Of the, the uh, that I get. Yeah. What I'm what I'm I'm thinking back now to shaking hands now. Now, if if the adults don't shake hands. How how do the adults turn around and tell kids, well, you got to shake hands and make up? Well, because of COVID, he usually fist bumps you. Um, Trump is known not to shake hands. So when you understand the background, just go to your podium and let's duke it out. But I would agree to a third uh, debate if they clarify both sides of the things they said that were uh, well, well, they don't say lies. They say uh, misquotes or whatever. Make them both acknowledge at the beginning with the commentators. Uh, this you said wasn't true. Let everybody know. Let the people know. Because if people are watching that, uh, clarify it and you won't do it again. Because they, they corrected him. They let her slide. And she could tell the biggest whopper no one was going to do anything about it. I I disagree the way it was handled, but so who knows what who's the way win. what was handled, please. Uh, the questions they interrupted him to say, "Oh no, that's not true." But they never did it to her when she was blatantly. You, if you read papers, if you listened to the news, you knew what she was saying was incorrect, and they just let it slide. But the worst is those beady eyes looking at him is just like my sister with my brother. She used to get him in trouble all the time, squealing on him. And then she would peek over to see, did I, did I get him angry? Did I get him to get into more trouble? That's how I took it. A waste of time on her side and his, using their time that they could be talking about the economy, talking about all kinds of other things, squealing on each other. Don't you think that's what the intention is? I, I, I saw what, a lot what, of debates. You know, if they're talking about their real agenda, then mm-hmm. uh, they, they, they know that they're going to lose points. Yes, but they should have said, let's get back onto, to, onto the topic. He, the, that's what the moderator should have said, yeah. Right, but I don't expect the candidates to obey that. But I'm tired of hearing her biography because that wasn't a question to give you a biography. I look, I won't argue that with you. Mm-hmm. But this is their time to shine. And You're talking about what, what, what do we have? Sixty, almost seventy million people. This was their time to shine, and that's what they're going to do. Donald Trump was out pushing his. His um, immigration agenda, she's out there pushing her whatever agenda. Yep. That's uh, what they were doing. And we're not unifying. Let's face it. It's just getting worse. It's no. more of a division than ever. I think that is the general plan right there. To divide and conquer. Yes. Uh, and, and you and I and the we's, we are the ones that are being conquered. And we'll be suffering the consequences. Well, we they have enough are. money to hide and, you know, live their life the way it is. You got it. We are suffering. Thank you. I yep. do appreciate it. 508-996-0500. That's how you get on Brian's Beat today. Welcome back. Um, of course, we've got the WBSM app that you can use. And within the app, you can use app chat. 
And I have an app chat here. There was no such agreement between the candidates not to shake hands at the debate. And the um, app chatter goes on to say they uh, apparently shook hands when they saw each other at the 9-11 ceremony the following day. All right, let's let's get back to your calls. 508-996-0500. Thank you and good morning. Good morning, Brian. Gilly Sapios. Good morning, Gilly. How are you doing this morning? Winging my wang. Okay. You know, you're talking about the debate and everything. You know, this morning I was watching uh, Newsmakers in Providence on Channel 12. Yep. About o'clock in the morning. And they were talking about their elections and everything. And then they made a comment um, yeah, over the border, which means, means Massachusetts. They actually made a statement on their program that they thought that she was given all the all the questions that she knew the questions. That was on the, the, the channel this morning. They thought that Kamala Harris was given. You know, that's the second time I've heard that. I don't know how true it is, but uh, no, no. I'm just I'm just quoting something. You know, I wouldn't quote anything unless I. It's on tape because that's what the Tim and them said, that he looked like she was given the answers. If she was given the answers, how come, you mean the questions? questions. If she was given the questions, how come she didn't answer them? Well, now listen, I'm, I overstepped the thing. You know, I've been up very early. Matter of fact, I'm up here in, Rock, in front of the police station. But the thing was, they made the statement that she was given the questions. She knew the questions before. A debate. Yeah, I, I heard that on, um, I'm not sure what channel I was listening to, but I, if she was given the questions, she would have prepped even better, number one. And, and number two, stuff like why that leaks you, out. It, why, it, 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 would, it would compromise uh, an already compromised network. No, no, I understand that. I understand. But why would you think she would would have done better? You're giving her that much of a... No, I'm... Uh, yeah, well, I'm... Because if you have... It's, it's like any test that you take. If you've got the answers or the questions before you take the test, then you should be able to prep your answers to answer it. Yeah. So, yeah, that, I am saying I that. That's a true statement. That's a true statement. But you got to consider the person that is answering the questions that they would... She knew the answers to, to answer the right. You, know, you know what I mean? If, if she knew the questions, I'm going to come back to what I said, Gilly. If she if she really knew, I, and look, I'm, I'm sitting here like you're sitting where you are at. I don't know. I wasn't a fly on the wall. Um, no, you're right. But I, I'm thinking to myself, if I have been given or my campaign has been given the questions that are going to be asked, then I'm able to plot out my answers to those questions to the national audience to make myself look even better Brian, when, when I go to answer them. Brian, I understand what you're saying. You said you. You're a lot smarter than she is in my book. So, Well, if I, you know, you if look- I was, then I would be, I would have been an attorney general, I would have been a U.S. senator, and I would have been vice president. Well, some people are happy where they are. True. In love. Good enough. Good enough. Okay. Thank you, man. Have a nice day. You too. I appreciate it. Thank you for your patience. Hello. Hi, Brian. Hi, Brian. Hi. Um, I just have a comment to say about the dogs, the dog situation with, with Trump. You know, I heard that about two weeks before that debate, and it was on WBSM. That same thing about the dogs again, that they were so hungry coming over here with no food that they were, they were uh, cutting, cutting up their dogs. I didn't hear about cats, but they said about the dogs, and they were going to eat the dogs. That was on your station. So if you, if you look back on your radio station, you'll hear it because it was in the morning. Because I, that's the only station I listened to is WBSM. And it was on there. And then when that David Muir said he fact-checked it and it wasn't so, that was a lie because it was on your station. Well, and wait a I, minute, I, wait a minute. It, just two different things. You may have heard hosts and or even in a newscast 
uh, that story come up, but it doesn't mean that it was factual. It was on your station. It, was, it doesn't it mean it was in, factual. In I mean, it, it was, it's been on our station for quite some time because even I talked about it before the debate. So I, I raised my hand. I talked about it, but I, I, I come back to you. Uh, people have been stating that it wasn't true. So it's been on our station and I, I can't speak for any of the other hosts. I don't know what they were, what they were saying about it. But um, from what we have been able to digest, it isn't true. A lot of things come up. We hear something. And, oh, can you believe that happened? And then all of a sudden you find out it really didn't happen. Yeah, but Trump did hear that because I heard it. And he must have been listening to the same news thing that I was listening to. But if I'm so Donald, I don't, I don't you, you and I aren't, you and I are not running for that. president of the United States. And if I'm going to say something like that in a debate arena, I would damn well want to make sure it's correct before I come out with it. Well, Kamala's the one that came out with it. No, Donald Trump was the one who came out with it. I thought it was Kamala that said something about that. No, well, she said something after the fact, and she made a lot of facial expressions about it. But it was Donald Trump who came out with that statement. I, I, well, he, but yeah, I think you're right there. I think he did. But he, I mean, yeah, it, he did. It was, it was and he, and he made casting. and he made a comment about it even yesterday when he was in Rancho Palos Verdes in Southern California. Well, you know, I I think that should be told that it, it was announced before. I mean, that's not something they're, they're, they're trying to make make Trump think that he made that up and he didn't because it was something that was over the news. So I'm not, I, I'm not quite sure who you're saying is they are saying that he made it up. It, it is definitely something that has been out there and he followed up on it. Right. But they, they, on the news all the time, it says, oh, look, he's, he's saying that they're going to eat... Yesterday, I was I was watching something. It was some news on I don't know if it was Channel Six or what it was on on the TV, and they were saying that uh, oh they're gonna they're, they're, people are gonna come over and they're gonna take our animals and cut our animals up and chew on our animals, take all our cats and dogs away from us. That's that's not what that's about. To the best of my knowledge, it's not. And you know you know, know I that thank you for your call. I'm gonna I'll leave it at that. Uh, great call though. I appreciate it. I was thinking about ducks. Now, I don't know what would be considered a domesticated duck. I have an idea. If you've got a duck running around in your backyard, that would be a domesticated duck. But most ducks that I see are on some kind of pond. And I've never been to Haiti. I've never talked to a Haitian person about it, but... People here in the United States of America eat duck. Sometimes they have duck as part of their Thanksgiving meal or a Christmas meal. So people eat duck. I'm not trying to say what's right or what's wrong. People eat duck. Now, as far as dogs and cats and some of the other so-called domesticated animals, eh, that's a different story. And so far, it hasn't been proven to be true. Or at least by, by somebody here as a Haitian. Hello. Good morning, Brian. Good morning, Brian. <laughs> okay, so I just want to say, I think I know where she got this from. Howie Carr had it on his radio before the debate. And um, you don't have to change the station, obviously, to get Howie Carr. But Howie Carr said it first, that they were going to the pond, the lakes, taking the ducks, chopping their heads off and walking off with them. And they, they were eating cats. And then there was, there was two news clips that Howie played of a man saying, oh, it's horrible what I see them doing with at the lake pond. And then um, he did a news clip with a female. And um, he did the first part and then the second part. And her part was that the woman was eating a cat on the street, laying there and eating the cat. And the supposed police officer you could hear him talking to the woman did you kill this cat and then she says no she shakes her head no you don't hear her say no 
and then <clears throat> supposedly this police officer asked her, "Did you um did you eat this cat?" And then you no, hear no, little, not at all. Well, you never bite it at all. Right. You hear this. <laughs> faint, you hear this little faint. You know, and then you hear him say, "All right, well, let's get, get let's put her in the cruiser." No, was this even live footage? I don't know, but it was on Howie's car show. It was before the debate, and then sure enough, sure as fire, Trump went and <laughs> repeated it. Mm-hmm. But he had, but um, he said dogs. Then just what was it yesterday or the day before yesterday? Trump was at a rally and he he said now th- he said the word geese. He didn't use the word duck. But it's been fact checked. The mayor's been on from that Springfield, Ohio, and said that, that, that there is no truth to this. There was one indication maybe there was truth to a woman that was eating a cat, but they said she was not Haitian. So could have been you know. So here we here we go again. It 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 could have happened. But it doesn't necessarily uh, tie in with somebody who's here illegally. Right. Exactly. (laughs) So what is that saying? about That's, you know, this is this is the hyperboil that has been going on for the past eight to ten years. (laughs) And, (laughs) you know, not that some of the stuff wasn't happening prior to Donald Trump coming onto the scene, but it, it, it has been electrified Mm -hmm. since he became a part of the the elect there are people out there that are going to vote for donald trump because they don't believe anybody else can do the job but donald trump yeah well i i have to say i was surprised um how we call must have been embarrassed i can't say embarrassed because he's a great radio um you know he knows his stuff but for Donald Trump not to have fact checked that, um, but yeah, so I don't know. I just thought it was funny, and I had no idea that day. I was tr- shredding stuff, going, you know, I've been shredding a lot of things, and I'm sitting there listening to the radio, and I'm just shredding away. And I said to myself, "Oh, this is one of the funniest bits how he's ever done." Now, even I thought it was all fake and baloney, but Donald Trump. <laughs> I wouldn't use baloney. <laughs> yeah, right. Bullpucky. I'll see it in a nicer, nicer way, a bunch of bullpucky. But yeah, so this is where that woman heard it on our station. I say our station because you never have to change the channel in order to hear Howie Carr. Now, yeah, the host, the morning host, Tim, and probably even Chris, probably brought it up, but they brought up the fact that it was being said, not that, that it was fact checked and it's real because we went. Well, I, I know that we talked about it last week on, yeah. on Brian's Beat. So, um, Right, exactly. Whatever so you know. I, yeah. Once again, um, if th- thank you first of all for your yeah. call. Thank you, I yeah, appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. I'm not Donald Trump. Don't want to be Donald Trump. Don't want to pretend to be Donald Trump. But I'm thinking if I am on the campaign trail, if I am on the campaign trail, and I'm in a close race, and I already have a reputation, whether it's a valid reputation or not. I have a reputation of saying false things. I'm going to be a little bit leery about it, especially on a debate that is going to be wide reaching, watched by so many different people. I'm not just going to, you know, that's me. That's me. I'm not Donald Trump. My guess is only a guess is that this story, it's not a huge, excuse me, it wasn't a huge story until the debate. There are certain people that knew or had heard about it. But if you're somebody who is, you know, tuning into the debate because you really haven't been following the politics and maybe making a decision about who you're going to vote for, and you hear Donald Trump make that kind of statement, you're going to say to yourself, Where the hell did that come from? Because you haven't heard about it. It didn't make the evening news or even the noon news. Or soup kitchen or whatever that uh, uh, kitchen, chicken soup, whatever uh, E! Entertainment runs. You you, you haven't seen that particular story. So you're going to be saying, what the heck is he talking about? All right. 
Enough of my pontificating. Your turn. Hello. Nobody like listen you. You Hello? should be off that station. Why is that? Because nobody like to listen you. Everybody tell, tell uh, things is not uh, perfect like he did. Say but again. He said I said I heard before in the radio. I heard that before. So he's not perfect, but he's after God for for America. America is in a war. Get out of there. You, you want to change mind people. Bye-bye. Um, okay. I Hopefully somebody else made out except for the part that I shouldn't be on the radio. But be that as it may. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. There you are. Another Trump hater. You're still hating Trump. You're... T- Kamala's standing out there, handing out lie after lie after lie, and all you can keep talking about. Donald Trump should have fact-checked, but he was talking about the cats and the dogs. Listen, nobody listens to radio stations more than I do. And that story was out everywhere, Brian. Might have been. But it wasn't a true story, was it? Wasn't a true story, was it? Uh, And about the... Go ahead, go ahead. Because it was out there. It was out there. Why don't you tell me what's good about Kamala and her freaking lies? And then I, about I, the what, doctor, what, said, oh, Have I said anything great about Kamala except for the fact that she did take the debate to him? Yeah, okay. Now, about the ducks and what you said. Oh, this, ha- uh, this hasn't been really happening. Uh, you can't really connect that to the illegals, really. This, uh, this, all this stuff with the ducks and cats and all was never going on before. It's going on now. And it is. I, well, I, 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 yeah, if, it's going, it if it's going on now... Then yeah, how how come they can't okay. how come they don't have any any yeah. any proof that it's happened? Yeah, and you want to waste your vote on some no name? Who the hell is it? Somebody at the bottom of the barrel? It's Trump and it's Harris right now. In and your mind, it is. The enemy. You're voting for the enemy. You need to pack. No, no. And get I am voting for a person who is going to stand up for our Constitution. And he's not going to win. So what? You know what? That, that, that doesn't mean that I'm going to turn around and vote for the lesser of, of two or three evils. You why can if you he, want why to. Why wasn't he at the debate? Where's your man in the debate? They Where don't allow. He? Are you kidding me? The Republicans and the Democrats don't allow it. Listen, you are going to waste your vote when right now you know inside your head that Donald Trump is the man for the job at the present time. But you can't do that. You have to waste your vote. Because if you're voting for Kamala, you've got to be one mental case. And you know it, Brian. You've got to be a mental case. Well, if I'm a mental case, and I feel pretty good because listening to you has satisfied my soul even more to make me... You're a hater. No, I love... That is the thing. That is the thing, young lady. I love the United States of America. That is why I'm a libertarian, and that is why I'm voting for the libertarian. Someone who's going to stick up for this country, who is going to do his best to try to follow the Constitution. Now, is he going to win? No. But that's the kind of person I'm supporting. You can support whomever. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, and it doesn't sound like anybody could tell you to do anything. So enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself, enjoy yourself. Go ahead and vote for Donald Trump if that's what you want to do. Hello. Hey, how you doing, Brian? Uh, it's just crazy kind of all the hate that you're getting this morning. Uh, for you know what? Pretty much the truth that you're saying because he, as a president and as somebody who quote unquote wants to be president again, you should be fact checking anything that comes out of your mouth. You know I what would I mean? think. I would be, I've been a quote unquote Trump supporter for the last few years, but I'm not happy with the way he's been running things the last few months. I really am not. And I don't think he is the right man for the job anymore. I really don't. He just doesn't have, he's, you're not fact checking, which is very simple one. Two, it's all me, me, me. And he should be talking about what he's going to do for this country and not think about everything that he's done quote unquote in the past. And it's like, I feel like his head's gotten too big and all these 
things that he thinks happened in a stolen election that it's just blinding people from the truth. And that's the problem. And you get people like that angry because they want everything their way. And America is you can vote for whoever you want and you can be whatever you want. And that's the way it should be. Well, I agree with that statement. Uh, Does that mean you're voting for Kamala Harris or are you not voting or do you even want to say? Uh, Honestly, I don't know at this point. I will not say because I'm kind of in the middle of everything. I'm still kind of seeing what policies are going and what they're actually really pushing because I think at this point, neither party kind of knows what they're going at and what they're trying to do. And I feel like it's just they're wasting so much time and energy attacking each other instead of hitting the real issues. You know what I mean? And that, I think, is what's kind of pushed me away from what's going on, you know what I mean, with the whole election. Because at one point, I feel like they were, when we would watch these elections years ago, it was, I'm going to do this for this country, I'm going to do that, we got to do this, and now it's, well, Kamala's this, and Trump is this, and this one's that, this was stolen, and there's just no fact-checking anymore, it's just a lot of spewing and attacking when we need to worry about what's going on in America for our Americans, our citizens, and everything wrong that's going on to make it better. And with all this hate going on, we're not we're never going to come back from it. No matter who wins, it it should be a hey, listen. So and so won, and as a country, we need to come together no matter what. And there'll always going to be some type of hate. I feel like I cannot disagree. I you know I can't speak for what things were like. Let's say from nineteen hundred to nineteen sixty. I was alive from 56 to 60, but I was too young. But it just seems to me that there's always been some form of animosity in the United States. I think in this day and age where there is the Internet, um, obviously radio, television and so many different cable channels, uh, a lot of this information gets out there and we can easily become news junkies. And Mm -hmm. folks, you know, we we have our opinion on on how we believe things should run. And what's what I see happening is that there is no come together. There is no in in my life rallying around the Constitution. And that, that is that that is thank you. That is what we're founded on. That is what I am voting on. And if yep. uh, if we have listeners who don't want to believe in that and, and think I'm anti-American or, or that I hate the country, so be it. It's, They're entitled to their, to their right. opinion. It's your God-given right to vote for who you want, and it's not a wasted vote. You're going to go down there, you're going to vote for who you want, and you're going to go home and you're going to say, I, that was my God-given right. You and if it. they win, they win. If they lose, they lose. And, 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 Brian, and they've, done, and they've done that for the past 30 years, believe me. <laughs> yep. And, Brian, I hope you have a good day, and I appreciate listening to you. And you stick to your values because that's the only way we're going to be Americans, my friend. Thank you, my man. Thank you for your call. Have I do appreciate day. it. 508-996-0500. Hello to you. Hello. Hello. Good morning. It's an excellent morning. I'm the old guy that gives tips. From the circumcision uh, ward? No. Oh, good. That's, uh, I get bigger tips because I do elephants. Oh, boy. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not stupid. Not yet. (laughs) Oh, Uh, boy. We've we've brought this show to a new level. Good morning to you. (laughs) Yeah, I'm the old guy. So, uh, let me tell you how I see this. The news, crooked news media, the communist news newspaper is funding all this and starting all this crap because they want to make it a race. It's a money situation. They don't want her to fail now because she is going to fail because she's a failure period. Her husband's a screwball. uh, I mean, the vice president is a screwball. He looks like one of the three stooges. And she's got the giggles. It's nothing but nerves. She, how is she going to stand up to a guy like Putin? Can you tell me? I, you're, look, I'm not voting for Kamala Harris. I'm not going. I, my guess is when you're in that position, you either learn how to stand up to the person or you don't. I have, 
I'm not even going to try to try to guess. But I'm not mm-hmm. looking at I'm not looking at Putin as the major problem right now. No, this is a big joke. The media is so crooked; it's awful. It's terrible, terrible. I never seen oh, anything oh, like oh, that. Okay, so the media could be crooked, as you're saying. Uh, but what about the two candidates running for office? You've, you've, the two you've, candidates. I'm I'm a Trump man because uh, if I was remodeling my house and I had several contractors there, I'd take the best price, and the guy had the best references from other people that he's worked for. And, and why do you think Donald reference, Trump would give you the best, you know, as a contractor, well, he would tra- give you the best? Uh, he's got a track record. He certainly does. Track rec- he has a track, track record. record. Let's think about that. He's got a track record of not paying his people. He's got a track record of filing for, for um, uh, what's you call it, uh, bankruptcy. Five times. I mean, he does have a track record. He's been bagged on fraud. He's this, this is somebody we're supposed for the to country trust. In the four years that he, what did he do for the country in the four years that he was in office? He brought us to a new height or low as far as our uh, our national debt. Uh, my God, he did more than that. Well, he did more than that. Dollar, I was paying a dollar eighty-two for my. Of my gas at uh, Joe's Gas on Nash Road. Okay, when Trump is in office, and that's great. Uh, I'm, I'm glad, I, and I and I hope that it was Donald Trump that got that price down to 182 for you. But that doesn't mean was. that doesn't mean he, that he was a great president. He was a great president. He you was a great president a to you. He was a great president for everybody. They weren't paying. Hundreds of dollars more for their groceries. They weren't paying taxes like the the way it is, and they weren't paying high mortgage rates. Uh, the thing has gone nuts because they have no control. They have no idea what the hell they're doing. He does. He's a businessman. I don't care about what he did. If people want to work for him, good for peanuts or whatever. That's the whole idea of being a businessman. I I, I uh, don't know that. That's the, that's the case. People did work for them. They ended up taking him to court because of the fact that um, they didn't get paid. So um, whether it was settled out of court or, or whatnot, I'm not quite sure. But I think you, you brought up a, a big point. There are people that care about his reputation, and there are people out there that could give a hoot about his reputation because... They were paying a dollar eighty two for gas. So what can I say? I mean you you have your mind made up and he might win. I've come out and I've stated it. I if we were talking three or four years ago, I would have said there's no way in hell he's gonna win. No way that I thought he was gonna get anywhere near as far as he has, but he has. And I do believe if if the vote were taken today that Donald Trump would lose the popular vote, but would win the electoral college vote. That's enough to get him back into the White House. Now, uh, to go back on what the caller was just talking about, groceries and whatnot, yes, they've definitely gone up. Do we we blame Joe Biden for that? Blame whomever you want. But there's no ifs, ands, or buts about the fact that groceries have gone up. There's also been talk about the fact that grocery stores have been um, price gouging. I don't know if it's price gouging or the Biden administration has screwed us to the point that the prices have gone up. I do know that inflation helped to bring the prices up. But here's something else that I know was just released the other day. Massachusetts has the highest incomes of any state in the United States, according to the census. Now, the census could be way off on this, but the typical household saw its income rise 1.5% last year when adjusted for inflation. So, there are people that are really pissed off at Joe Biden, and I can understand that. I, I'm not a fan, 
But there are also people that are going to turn around and tell you, hell, we're doing a lot better with the Biden administration and certainly better than having that guy, Donald Trump, back in the White House. Who will it be? Let's see. Ken Pittman is on his way. He will be up and carrying you for the next three hours. One final call before we say goodbye. Hello. Hey, Brian. Good morning. Good morning to Um, you. As far as the debate goes and the fact checkers, we need to be our own fact checkers. I don't I don't uh, put my trust in ABC, CNN, because uh, we know they didn't do their job. So we need to do our own job and do our own research so that we don't get swindled. And as far as the other thing, I was hearing it on Howie Carr in Springfield, Ohio, that uh, the the, uh, the migrants were eating duck and geese. They're do- disappearing from the, the the ponds around uh, in and around the areas of Springfield, Ohio. And it, and it was uh, Howie Carr that was reporting it. And so, and should, so, should, so, so who, so who, should, to me. who, who yeah. should we believe? Howie Carr? Uh, great, great talk show. Well, no, not ABC. Uh, certainly, you can say ABC, but the governor of Ohio, or and the mayor of Springfield, Ohio, they oh, refute I don't believe that. them at all. The Democrats. No, they're not. They're Republicans. They are Republicans. They're Republicans. Yes. Uh, Republic. Republicans. Well, who knows? Today, uh, we don't know. I think uh, the people uh, in, here in the United States were getting whipsawed around with all kinds of lies and so-called fact-checkers. I don't believe ABC or any others. We, Like I said, I'm going to close with saying we need to do our own fact-checking and not be I lazy about it. I think that's a great it. idea. No, I no, that is an excellent idea. I, I like to pride myself on the fact that I, I've been doing it for several years, so I, I well, kind of know what to job, do. Well, you do a great job, Brian. But, um, you do a great job. Keep it up. Other other folks don't want to do that. And so when they hear something, they're going to just believe. And, you know, people people still think that it's not a genocide going on in uh, in Gaza. I, I think it's that ethnic cleansing, but be that as it may. Thanks for your call. I do appreciate it. As I mentioned before, Ken Pittman is up next. Boy, I'm curious as his thoughts on the Patriots game the other night. Adios.